Shalom, family. This is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University, GA. And I want to speak to you on the topic. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, family, we know that the Most High God of Israel is a spirit. And he said, all that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So family, we know that according to the scripture, he sent his spirit Christ, descending down out of heaven like a dove to rest upon us. And his spirit Christ will teach us all things and bring all things to our remembrance. So Christ is speaking through the mouth of Yahweh, through the mouth of some call him Jesus, but it's the spirit of Christ speaking because the most high God of Israel put his spirit inside this man, speak a word. And Christ is saying to us today, family, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's very important that we come to the knowledge of God, because as we come to the knowledge of the Most High, Yahweh, we can receive his spirit. We can receive that Holy Ghost. We can receive that spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So family, without further ado, we're going to go forward with this teaching. And it's my prayer that someone will get something out of this message. We can't buy our way into the kingdom. We cannot uh, negotiate the rules and the instructions and everything that's already been set in place. The only way that we can come to Yahweh to be a part of that kingdom, that royal priesthood, that family, that kingdom of God is through Christ. So Christ is speaking today. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we're going to go ahead on and get started with this teaching. And we start at John, the 14th chapter, in the first verse. It says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So he's telling us, don't let your heart be troubled. If you believe in Yahweh, believe also in me. This is Christ speaking. How do you believe in God and you talk about God, but you don't believe in the spirit that he gave to teach you and to lead you and to guide you in the pathway of righteousness? And he's saying in my father's house, there are many mansions because we are the temple of God. The ones that choosing to obey his voice, the ones that's choosing to live a righteous and a holy life, a set apart life, a life that's pleasing in the eyesight of the most high, you are considered a mansion because that's where his spirit dwells. He's saying my father's house are many mansions. So in other words, he got some down here that's obeying his voice. He got some down here where his spirit, Christ, is dwelling in. He got some down here that is not trying to be a stiff-necked, rebellious individual. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. 1 Corinthians 3, 16, know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, 
him shall Yahweh destroy. But the temple of Yahweh is holy, which temple ye are. In other words, for the temple of Yahweh is separated, is sanctified, is set apart, is righteous, which temple ye are. So this mansion that what he's talking about is you. This is why he can proclaim and decree that in his father's house, there's many mansions because there's some individuals out here that decided to come in the ark. In other words, to come in the heart of God. See, if you made that choice to come inside the ark into the heart of God, you'll be considered one of these mansions where his spirit is dwelling. Let's keep going. John, the sixth chapter and the 63rd verse. It is the spirit that quickened it. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. See, family, if, if you're not having a spiritual mind and following me in this teaching as I run spiritual precepts and give spiritual understanding, you won't be able to receive this message. If you continue with a carnal mindset, trying to study a spiritual God word, you will never be able to come to the knowledge of the truth of what he's actually trying to get you to see. It's very important that we receive this spiritual meat. It's very important that we be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, meaning weaned from carnal understandings. And we need to get on this meat, which is a spiritual understanding, a spiritual food to feed your spiritual soul, your spirit, your spirit that's within. So he said, it is the spirit, it is this word of truth that quicken it. This is what's going to teach you and convert you and heal you and, and raise the, the, uh, the dead and heal the sick and open the ear of the dumb, open the eyes of the blind. He said, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Second address 2 and 35. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. So he said, be ready. Don't let them catch you with your work undone. See, family, if we serve in this spiritual God, he gave us his spirit, Christ, to rest upon our temple and teach us and lead us and guide us, we ought to be producing fruits of the spirit. We should have knowledge stored up in our temple so when Christ return and we have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, we have some fruits in our basket. He won't catch us empty handed, a tree with no fruits on it meaning you didn't take the time to study. You didn't take the time to retain the knowledge that was given unto you. You just want to listen. Oh, let me go over here. They, they talk some good uh, teaching over here. I'm just going to listen. I'm not going to take no notes. Oh, I just like to listen. See, family, you got to be serious about this thing. You got to put your time in. You got to study this word. 
and most of all, understand what he's saying. Stop trying to, to learn all of this spiritual stuff right out the gate. Let's get some foundational precept to understand it. Let's understand the foundational things. The more and more we, we uh, work on the foundational understanding of precepts, then we can get on uh, the heavier stuff. He said, be ready to the reward of the kingdom. In other words, it ain't that the kingdom is not ready because the kingdom is ready. He trying to give us time to get ourselves ready. He said, for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Verse 52, for unto you is paradise open. The tree of life is planted. The time to come is prepared. Plenteous is made ready. A city is built and rest is allowed. Yea, perfect goodness and wisdom. The root of evil is sealed up from you. Weakness and moth is hid from you. And corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten. He's sitting there telling us all of these things are set up for us. He says, sorrows are past, and in the end it showed the treasure of immortality. I mean, that's what we're working for. That's what we're working for. That's what we're studying and we're we are obeying the voice of the Most High. We love him because we love him enough to keep his commandments, not just lip service. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. And love your neighbor as thyself. This is what we're going to do. We're working to enter in this kingdom. Sorrows will be passed away. And in the end, it showed the treasure of immortality. You get to switch out this old fleshly body for that spiritual body that would never wear out, would never ache in pain, would never grow old. Hmm. Let's keep going. John 14 and 3, Christ still speaking. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, in the way ye know. See, he's telling us the way right now. <laughs> Excuse me. He say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? See, it's a lot of us like doubting Thomas. We don't know the way. We haven't been properly showed the way. We know of a way but we don't know the way. We think if we put all our trust in a man or whatever that man is telling us out of his mouth, contradicting the scriptures, that's the way that we want to follow. So even as Thomas was saying, he said, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus, meaning salvation, said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is Christ speaking. Salvation. No man coming unto the Father but by me. It ain't no other way, family. 
It ain't no other way. Salvation, the anointed one, which is Christ. He is the way, the spirit of God, the son of God, meaning the servant of God, Christ. He is the way. He say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Baruch 3 and 14. Learn where is wisdom, where is strength, where is understanding, that thou mayest know also where is length of days and life, where is the light of the eyes in peace. Christ is the way. See, because if you have Christ, if you're in Christ and Christ is in you, He's going to teach you this wisdom. He's going to give you this strength. He's going to give you this understanding. And for that reason, he's going to give you eternal life for the ones who endure to the end. It's simple as that. 1 Samuel 2 and 3, talk no more so exceeding proudly, let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord, the Spirit of God, is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. See, family, Christ is the only one gonna be able to give you this knowledge because Christ is the servant of the Father, the Most High. He said, no man coming to the Father except by me, but by me. Christ is the way. For the Spirit of God is a God of knowledge and by him, actions are weighed. Baruch 3 and 13. For if thou hast walked in the way of Yahweh, thou shouldest have dwelled in peace forever. See, family? He had the kingdom. But because of disobedience, we got kicked out. But he's so merciful and so, so gracious, his love toward us. He didn't change anything that he put in the covenant that he made with us. Even though we was a rebellious, stiff-necked, disobedient, hard-headed people, the Most High never changed. What he said he going to do, that's what he's going to do. And I'm going to pull this precept in here. Psalms 89 and verse 34, he says, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. See, we can trust in the most high. He said, I'm not going to break this covenant. I'm not going to break it. So Malachi uh, 3 and verse 6 says, but I am the Lord. I am the spirit of God. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed for that only reason is the only reason why we're not consumed. Because he told us in Psalms 89 and 34, he's not going to break his covenant and he's not going to alter the things that have come out of his lips. He's not going to do it. And I'm going to give you one more uh, to go by. 
Let's go to Book of Numbers, chapter 23 and verse 19. It said, Yahweh is not a man that shall lie, neither the son of man that he shall repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So we clearly see, he say, for if thou has walked in the way of Yahweh, thou shouldest have dwelt in peace forever. But family, we see that he gave us opportunity to get our house in order. He gave us an opportunity to kill off this flesh and live according to the spirit of God, according to Christ. But the choice is ours. Verse 12, thou hast forsaken the fountain of wisdom. This is what we have done. that thou art counted with them that go down into the grave. See, family? So, it's a whole lot of folks walking around right now that's spiritually dead. They don't have a clue of this message of truth that we bringing out at the King James Bible University lost sheep of the house of Israel. They're just living their lives according to the flesh, day by day, month by month, year by year. And the most high wanting us to kill off the flesh. He said we are Count it with them that go into the grave, meaning we spiritually dead. That's why Christ said, the words that I speak, they are life. They're spirit and life. And these are the words that we trying to give you to feed your soul, to feed your spirit to give you this life. Verse 10, he say, how happened it, Israel? How happened it that thou art in thine enemy's land, that thou art waxing old in a strange country, that thou art defiled with the dead? See, didn't we just get through saying that? See, it's a lot of you right now, even this day. You already got the warnings. You already even been told this before. But a lot of you, you still got that tree up right now. All you know is, Nine o'clock and oh, Elder Jenkins on. Let me let me uh, leave out of the family room with everybody around the tree and let me let me ease back here in the room and and close up where I can hear the teaching. You play, trying to play both sides. You don't think the Most High know you still got that tree up in your house and you still uh, gonna do the whole. Christmas celebration with your gifts and all that. You don't think the most high know what you're doing behind closed doors? You're not fooling nobody. He said, come from out from among them and be ye separated. Come out of her, my people. This is what he told you. But you're still going to find a way to justify what your flesh want to do. You want to hold on to the traditions of the Hebrew. He tell you right in the book. 
Don't learn the way of the heathen. So he said, how happened in Israel that thou art in thine enemy's land, that thou art waxing old in a strange country, that thou art defiled with the dead? A lot of you defiling yourself right now. But you think you're getting away with it. Verse 9. Hear, Israel, the commandments of life. Give ear to understand wisdom. We're not trying to be this type person to where we're just uh, some people got the phrase of Debbie Downer or uh, someone that's just always trying to ruin things for you. No, we got an important job to do. We trying to save your life with the word of God. Trying to give you this wisdom so you can have it stored up. He didn't tell us to speak smooth words and have to be up and down with you to be your friend and, and, and have to say things in a roundabout way to where you can feel good about it. He told us to preach the word to be Instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. So we already know we're not going to be well liked by many, even many of you. But we got a job that we have to do, family. So he said, Here, Israel, the commandments of life. Give ear to understand wisdom. Ecclesiastes 43. For the Lord, the Spirit of God, have made all things into the godly, have he given wisdom. The only way you're going to receive this if you walk in with Christ to the godly. He have garnished the excellent works of his wisdom. And he is from everlasting to everlasting. Unto him may nothing be added, neither can he be diminished. And he have no need of any counselor. No need. No fight escaping him. Neither any word is hidden from him. Then I just get through saying that Christ knows you. You still got that tree up there in the house. He knows. He knows all about it. He knows your heart. He knows my heart. He knows your attentions. He knows my attentions. He said, no thought escaped him. Neither any word is hidden from him. He declared the things that are past and for to come and reveal it the steps of hidden things. Speaking about Christ, the same one that said, I am the way, the truth, in the life. Let's keep going. He seek it out the deep in the heart and consider their crafty devices. 
for the Lord, the Spirit of God, knoweth all that may be known, and he beholdeth the signs of the world. So in other words, it ain't nothing that will get past him. He said he knoweth all that may be known. Christ. The Lord, the Spirit of God, have not given power to the saints to declare all his marvelous works, which the almighty Lord firmly settled that whatsoever is might be established for his glory. So he's sitting there telling us, he didn't give us this power to, to declare all of his marvelous works. So it's still a whole lot of stuff that he is way higher, his understanding and everything is way higher than ours. He gave us enough to know who we serving and who we dealing with and to know what is expected and required of us in order for us to enter into his kingdom. Ecclesiastes 39 and 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. He will keep the sins of the renowned men and where subtile parables are he will be there also. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences and be conversant in dark parables. In other words, you'll be precepting his word to find out these parables and these dark sayings and these riddles and understanding what these words mean according to his precepts. Not going outside of the book, but using the book as a dictionary, a commentary, and a history book, all wrapped in one. The 1611 King James Version Bible with the Apocrypha. This is what you'll be doing. This is how we prepare our teachings by precepting his word. John 14 and 7. If I had, if ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. See, he's trying to straighten Thomas out. <clears throat> Thomas was right there walking with Yahweh. Christ was in Yahweh. And he's trying to tell them, if ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him, because the reason why you see him, because the works of the father, that spirit should be manifested. Should be manifested in you. Ephesians 1 and 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord, salvation, the anointed one, Yahweh Shai the Messiah. Some people might say Jesus Christ the Messiah, as long as you know he's talking about the spirit of God, which is Christ, and we're okay. Who have blessed us with all spiritual things in heavenly places in Christ. This is what's going down. The spirit of God. According as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by salvation, the anointed one to himself according to the good 
pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace. Wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his life, because the word blood means life. We have redemption through his life, the forgiveness of sins according to the rich riches of his grace. When he have abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made none, and having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which have which he had purpose in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Both we are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated, according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. See, family, that was a whole lot to unpack, right? He's sitting there telling us, Israel, that we was predestinated, predestined, according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will to obtain this inheritance. This thing was predestined. And a lot of us, we act like it's not important. We act like what we got going on in our own personal life is more important than learning the ways of the Most High, than following after Christ and allowing Christ to rest in our temple and lead and guide us. He already placed this law in your heart and in your mind. In other words, he already gave you his spirit and you say, no, I don't want this spirit. I don't want to learn the ways of the spirit of Christ. I just want to live my life. If you only knew how important these scriptures are and what is really sin, you would take it more seriously, family. You wouldn't be so easily distracted by all of these systems and these traps and these ditches and these things that set up to cause us to fall. You wouldn't be so easily provoked, tempted, and, and you know, these different things that present themselves before us. You will be able to see it a mile away when it comes your way. Verse 12, that ye should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, hmm. which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. See, family, it's the word of truth. The gospel of our salvation. This is the only thing 
that is going to allow us to be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The word of truth. Somebody say, well, what, what is this word of truth? What you talking about? The gospel is the gospel. It's a universal gospel. No. He said a word of truth. The gospel of your salvation. The one that is precepting his word and obeying his voice. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. Love thy neighbor as thyself. See, if you want to be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, you need to be obeying his voice. John 14 and 8. Now, first we had Thomas asking a little question like he was a little doubtful. And now here we got Philip. It said, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficed us. And Yahweh meaning salvation, said unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet has thou not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father. And how says thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. See, this was a lot of. Christians get messed up right here. They're going to tell you he, Yahushua or Jesus was 100% man and 100% God. Not understanding that it was the spirit of God, the servant of God, Christ, the word of God that descended out of heaven like a dove and rested upon this man. So he said, believest thou not that I am in the Father, in the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. So when Christ is in you, you ought to be having the characteristics of the Father. You should be having the attributes of the Father. This is what Christ is going to teach you. Deuteronomy 18 and 18, let's prove the point even more. He said, and I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them, all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So we see the Most High is speaking. And he even showing Moses that this is what he's going to do. He was speaking about Yahweh Shai. Speaking about Jesus, he's going to put his words in his mouth. The words that he's going to speak, they're mine. This is what the Most High is saying. And he said, and whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak, he's showing their separation. In my name, I will require it of him. So this is 
clear. Precepts was this understanding. Matthew 3 and 16, and Yahweh Shai, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. This was Christ descending like a dove. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, meaning my beloved servant, in whom I am well pleased. The Most High was speaking about this spirit that came descending down, his son, his servant. This is what he was well pleased in, the spirit that came descending down, that rested in Yahweh. This is what it is. Let's keep going. Wisdom of Solomon 7, we speaking about this same spirit. It says, for wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passed it and going through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of God and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her. The same spirit that came descending out of heaven like a dove and rested upon Yahweh. It's the breath of the power of God and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. The same spirit that told us that I am the way, the truth, in the life, no man coming to the Father except but by me. The same spirit. John 14 and 11. Believe me that I am in the Father, in the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. It's what Christ is saying. Believe me for the work's sake. Ecclesiastes 24 and 1. Talking about the same spirit, Christ. Wisdom shall praise herself and shall glory in the midst of her people. In the congregation of the Most High shall she open her mouth and triumph before his power. I came out of the mouth of the Most High and covered the earth as a cloud. Then we just get through reading in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, for she is the breath of the power of God and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Now he's saying that I came out of the mouth of the Most High. And I'm slowing down because I want somebody to really get it. For she is the breath of the power of God. For she is the breath of the power of God. Wisdom, the spirit of Christ. And now he said, I came out of the mouth of the Most High and covered the earth as a cloud. I dwelled in high places and my throne is in a cloudy pillar. I alone compass the circuit of heaven and walk in the bottom of the deep. In the waves of the sea and in all the earth and in every people and nation, I got a possession. With all these, I sought rest and in whose inheritance shall I abide? So the creator of all things gave me a commandment and he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest and said, let thy dwelling be in Jacob and thine inheritance in Israel. 
this was that same spirit that came descending down like a dove and rested upon Yahweh Isn't Yahweh a part of Israel? This is clear. Then we read over in Ephes uh, the book of Ephesians that it was predestined because of his own will for his own purpose. We saw that earlier in the book of Ephesians. Verse nine, he created me from the beginning before the world and I shall never fail. In the holy tabernacle, I served before him and so was I established in Zion. In other words, I was established in the house of Israel. I was established in the house of Jacob. This is what Zion is talking about. You know, when something is established, this is where it get its beginning. This is where it got its start. That's what it's saying. Verse 11, likewise, in the beloved city, he gave me rest. And in Jerusalem was my power. And I took root in an honorable people, even in the portion of the Lord's inheritance. See, verse 11, this is a spiritual verse, this beloved city is talking about you. And if you obeying his voice, you're that mansion in this beloved city. He said, in Jerusalem was my power. That's where his name is. His name is on you. Oh, Jerusalem. The house of Eden. Oh, Jezreel. Oh, ye daughters of Zion. Oh, ye have many names in scripture that he called us. We just need to make sure that we on the right side of the plumb line. Let's keep going. All these things are the book of the covenant of the most high God. Even the law which Moses commanded for an heritage unto the congregations of Jacob. Isn't that what I just got through saying? He said, even the law which Moses, which the spiritual meaning for Moses is the word of truth. So even you can say, even the law which the word of truth commanded for an heritage unto the congregations of Jacob, meaning those tribes of Jacob. Think not to be strong in the spirit of God, that ye may, that he may confirm you, cleave unto you, for the spirit of God almighty is God alone, and besides him, there is no other savior. He's telling us. No one else going to get you out of this. Except the spirit of God. Christ. The same one that. But she is the breath of the power of God and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty.
this is your savior. Besides him, no other savior. John 14 and 12, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. We clearly see where Christ came down, rested in Yahushai. He died. The Most High raised them back up. And he ascended back up to be with the Almighty. We can prove that through scripture all day long. He who descended is the only one to have ascended. Tell us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 50, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood is not in the kingdom of God. But the spirit of Christ, the spirit of God is. Verse 13, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, meaning in the servant. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. So he's telling us it's a certain way we got to walk. We got to walk upright. And we ask him, he say he'll do it. We got to be walking upright, loving the Lord our God by keeping his commandments. Verse 16, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Talking about the Spirit of God, Christ, the Holy Ghost. Ecclesiasticus 25 and 1. And three things. I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. Three sorts of men my soul hated. And I am greatly offended at their life. A poor man that is proud, a rich man that is a liar, and an old adulterer that doted. And this is a spiritual verse because he's saying a poor man, meaning a man that's poor, that's lacking the knowledge of God. He's lacking knowledge, but yet he's proud. And this rich man, he have knowledge, but he's lying. He's not telling the people the truth. He done studied. He done seen what this word is saying, but he's lying to the people. He say a rich man that is a liar. And a, a old adulterer that doted, meaning just hawing around with other gods, dipping and dabbling in other doctrines, believing many different things. See, it's a spiritual verse. Verse three say, if thou has gathered nothing in thy youth, how canst thou find anything in thine age? Oh, how commonly a thing is judgment for gray hairs and for ancient men to no counsel. See, these ancient men, these are the ones that's Full of wisdom. They put their time in studying and, and learning the ways of the Most High. 
Verse 5, oh, how commonly is the wisdom of old men and understanding in counsel to men of honor. See, you don't even have to be old in age to be considered an old man. It's the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding that you retain from studying your word. It's what consider you old men, an ancient, full of wisdom, full of understanding. He said, in counsel to men of honor, much experience is the crown of old men. In the fear of Yahweh is their glory, meaning the desire of God is their glory. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy. In the tenth, I will utter with my tongue. A man that have joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. Well is him that dwelleth with a wife of understanding, and that have not slipped with his tongue, and that have not served a man more unworthy than himself. Well is him that have found prudence, and he that speaketh in the ears of them that will hear. Oh, how great is he that findeth wisdom. Yet is there none above him that feared the Lord, meaning there's none above him that desired the spirit of God. These are the things that make his heart merry. John 14 and 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So he told us a whole lot right there. You ought to enjoy your children. It's a blessing to have a wife of understanding, a spouse of understanding. All of these things to have this wisdom. Ecclesiastes 21 and 11. He that keepeth the law of the Lord get it the understanding thereof. And the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. He said the perfection of that desire of the Spirit of God is wisdom. He that is not wise will not be taught. Just like that old stubborn mule, that old stubborn ass. They hard-headed. They don't want to hear a thing you got to say. Stiff neck. He say, he that is not wise will not be taught. But there is a wisdom which multiplies bitterness. The knowledge of a wise man shall abound like a flood. In other words, that knowledge is going to keep flooding in and saturating and saturating. And his counsel is like a pure fountain of life. He's always going to be speaking spiritual things in the knowledge of God. And that same spiritual word is spiritual meat for your so to give you life. He said the inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel. And he will hold no knowledge as long as he liveth. 
It's like pouring water into a broken glass. The more and more you pour water in it, the water just run right out. Because he said the inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel. They don't want the knowledge. They don't want to retain it. He said, if a skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend it and add unto it. But as soon as one of no understanding hear it, it displeased him, and he cast it behind his back. So he don't want nothing to do with it. He don't want to hear it. He don't want to understand it. I don't know about that there. That's, I ain't never heard that. I'm going to just keep doing what I'm doing, okay? He said, if a skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend, he will commend it and add unto it. But as soon as one of no understanding hear it, it displeased him and he cast it behind his back. And we're going to show a silhouette picture of that in Matthew chapter 13, when in verse 19, when anyone hear the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then come it the wicked one and catch it away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. See that word came to you. But you didn't understand it. You didn't give it time to marinate. You just cast it behind your back. He said, this is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that receive it the seed into stony places, the same as he that hear it the word, and anon with joy receive it. Yet have he not root in himself, but do it for a while. But when tribulation or persecution arise it, because of the word, by and by, he is offended. Don't you know the most high already done warned us that we must go through these trials and tribulation. He must prove us, test us, to confirm us, to see if we worthy to enter in his kingdom. See, that's the one that still had a stony heart. That seed didn't have nowhere to germinate and take root in your heart. That word. Verse 22. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word in the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word. And he becoming unfruitful. It got choked out because the cares of this world. Didn't Christ tell us that we are not of this world? If we was of this world, the world would love his own. How come you think you're most hated and you get treated the way you get treated? because you are not from this world. I am not from this world. We are not from this world, even as Christ is not from this world. But if you get caught up in the cares of this world, in the deceitfulness of riches, it's gonna choke 
that word that was sown in you, even this word that you hearing today, because some of you still hiding in the back, listening at this word, but yet everybody celebrating around the tree in the front room. See, this is what he's talking about. It's going to choke the word and it become unfruitful. You think you can straddle the fence. You think you can serve God in mammon. Either you're going to be in or you're going to be out. Where you think those gangs got their ideology from? A lot of time those gangs they tell you you gonna you gonna be in or you gonna be out, and if you in you gonna be in for life until you die, one way or the other. Same way with the Most High, but the Most High is the creator and originator of all things. See, everybody get their understanding in bits and pieces. They, they glean and get things and set up systems in place straight from what they see out of the Bible. A lot of these movies is made just from what they see out of the Bible. Verse 23, he said, but he that receives seed into the good ground, meaning a good heart, a heart that's willing to obey, to receive what the most high have for them, is he that heareth the word, and not only hear the word, but in understanding it, which also bear fruit and bring it forth some a hundred, some 60, some 30. This is the one that that word, that seed fell on good ground. That word was sown in a a good heart, a willing heart. And that word had enough power to heal you. It had enough power to deliver you. It had enough power to cleanse you. It had enough power to purge you. And for that reason, you will be able to understand this word and bear fruit. That's why Christ always tells us that her have her perfect work in you. You're not going to learn everything overnight. I didn't learn everything overnight, and I'm yet still learning. We're going to be learning our entire life. See, in our Bible study class, it took us a year and a half to get through Deuteronomy chapter 28. A year and a half. Doing one verse at a time. Not being in no hurry. Not trying to rush it. Making sure we precept each verse. And when we come out of that Bible study, we have a clear understanding of what that single verse is telling us. 
not only carnally, but spiritually. He said, but he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understand it, which also bear the fruit and bring it forth some in a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. See, right now we're in a book of Psalms. And you know, Psalms have a whole lot of information. I'm not even going to try to imagine how long it's going to take to get through Psalms. But I know we're going to be in Psalms for a long time. And we're only in chapter two right now. It's not a sprint. We're not ra racing, rushing, or anything. One verse at a time. When Christ returned, we can prove to him that we've been studying, we've been learning, and we've been applying what we learn to our life. We've been hearing fruits. We want our spot in the kingdom. The things that was predestined to us, he said it was his own will that it was predestined. So family, the choice is yours. You're going to have a stony heart. You're going to be uh, amongst the thorns. And you're going to be a heart that's ready to receive the word of truth. It's a choice that you're going to have to make. Let's keep going. He said, but blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. You see that? It's very important that we receive this word, understand what it's saying, and start bearing fruits. John 14 and 25. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You don't have to let your heart be troubled because what's going on in this strange country. He already told us he left his peace with us, his spirit. Holy Ghost. He said, my peace I give unto you, not the world. He told us in John 17 and 9, I pray for you. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. He's showing the separation. He 
It said, not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. First Timothy 6 and 12, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of Yahweh, who quickeneth all things, and before the anointed one salvation, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord salvation the anointed one which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only continent the king of kings and lord of lords Yahweh shot a messiah verse 16 who only have immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, hmm. whom no man have seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting, amen. So family, we see here now, he's saying a whole lot right here. He's saying, we must keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable until the appearing of Yahweh Shah the Messiah. We must do this thing. We must endure to the end. Hmm. He said he the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the blessed and only continent who only have immortality. He don't have flesh and blood. He's not given flesh and blood. He only have immortality and he's only given eternal life. And flesh and blood cannot enter into eternal life. It's a dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto. That light is so bright, flesh and blood couldn't handle that light. Whom no man have seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. See, he even told us earlier in the book of, of Ecclesiasticus that he have not given us the power to know all of the things that he have established in his mighty works. And this is one of them that he's confirming right here. We can see this light in this fleshly body. We get that spiritual body, that immortal body. And we'll be able to, to see him and, and, and live with him in the kingdom. Then and only then. So family, I, I just hope and pray that someone got something from this message. You know, I hope it was able to comfort some and maybe it chastise others. But most of all, I pray that it was edifying to your spirit. I hope this was something that you were able to digest and understand. I hope and pray that you're not the one that 
the word was sown on stony places. That you're not the one that it was sown among thorns. That you're not the one that fell by the wayside when his word was being sown into your heart. I pray that it's going by the airways into a good ground, to a good heart. Now how to receive what the Most High have prepared for them. That he done predestined it and it was his own will. His word come to you. So family, I hope everyone have a wonderful Sabbath. And just be safe and careful and vigilant as we continue to live day by day in this wilderness. Study and meditate on his word and most of all, bear fruits. Because Christ told us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man see it the Father except by me, but by me. So Christ said nothing is hidden from him, and he know all things to be known, told us that. So I'm gonna say a shalom to everyone until we meet again, shalom.